Hello, I hope you're doing fine. So last time uh, in the previous lecture, you got familiar with a rapid interface and um, you learned where things are. So today we are going to learn about walls and how to add new wall, how to modify walls and different types of walls. So um, to start actually, let's open or create a new project so if you go to file uh, under new you can start a new project or from the main page if we close this here under projects you have uh, the option to open or create a new project so let's click on new you will see that the template file uh, is either construction template, you can choose architectural, uh, structural, or mechanical. Let's choose uh, architectural. Uh, please do not use any other template uh, for now. Say OK. So the templates are uh, given to you either by the company you work for or you can use the ones uh, from Autodesk. You can start a blank file, but it's actually much wiser to start with a template because uh, if you look at Project Browser, it has um, the floor plans for you, it has ceiling plans, it has elevations and so on. Uh, otherwise, you will have to start creating all of this from scratch so it is always good to have something to start with here on the ribbon on the build ribbon we have wall uh, the shortcut is wa so you can either type wa or click on the wall if you look at the drop down menu we have wall architectural and here it enables uh, the drawing panel so i can create a wall always pay attention to the option bar so you see that there are uh, parameters that i can modify under the option bar uh, such as the height or depth if it's going to be unconnected or connected to level one two or so on um, if it is unconnected you can specify the height uh, the location line can be wall center line or you can choose any other option. For now, let's leave it at wall center line. Um, you can create a chain of walls or you can turn this off. You can create an offset, radius and so on. Uh, I don't want to go over all of them in detail. We will learn more about them as we do this. So here, if you click on the canvas, it's going to initiate the wall. And if you move your mouse, you see that it will uh, create the size as it shows. So I can create a nine feet wall, a 27 foot wall or so on. Or you can just type the uh, dimension. So let's type 50, enter, and uh, for now I just want to show you different types of wall. Uh, so if you go to 3D, you will see what this wall is. Um, okay, do you want to save changes? Yes, let's go ahead and save this project. I'm going to... Um, save the file um, okay. so sorry my Revit decided to shut down and um, I don't know it crashed um, but here we are back um, so here is the piece of wall I created if you click on it and let's go back to architecture tab um, under properties it actually shows you the type of the wall it is so as you see it is a basic wall generic 8 inches 
and I can change these to other types of wall. So for example, I can change this to exterior, brief, and um, scene view. And the appearance of the wall will also change when I do that. Um, if you look at the exterior, it shows better. Here I can also change the visual style to shade it so I can see the colors as well. So now if you click on it, if you choose the wall and if you go to edit type, I'm working with two monitors so the pop-up window opened in the other uh, browser. Okay, so here under edit types, I see the type properties. So you see that this is a family of uh, system family. So a system family means that you cannot actually change it. We can create families. That's one of the strengths of uh, Revit. Um, that you can create a family and use it again and again. But uh, when you have a system family, you can create different types or you can modify the types, but you cannot actually uh, change the system family itself. So we have basic wall, we have curtain wall, and we have stacked wall. And again, you cannot create another system family of another um, major uh, type or another family of wall. Uh, uh, those, uh, the programmers from Autodesk can do it. But you can create different types. So here, or you can modify the types, I think that's better to say. Um, here I had brick and CMU and metal stock. And here you can uh, see the type parameters that have been defined. So if you look at the preview for this, this is the basic wall. And you can see all the um, layers. This is in floor plan. We can change it to section. So you can see the section of this. I can change this to stacked wall and here under construction you can edit it so a stacked wall is basically two basic walls connected to each other so this one is uh is having two stacks the one at the bottom and the one at the top and um you can click on each of them you can modify them you can change them um, you can change the uh, properties of them. So you can add another layer to it if you want. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm going to go back to, uh, oh, I didn't need to close the preview. If I say, okay, I will go back to the family. So let's look at the basic wall. So as you see, it's not stacked. It has multiple layers still, but it's not, uh, uh, it's not made of two stacks of walls on top of each other. And then another system family wall we have is a curtain wall. And we will talk about curtain walls. Uh, curtain walls are, um, as you see, there is no preview. They have their own uh, components and you can see that actually from the um, chapter let's take a look at this so here is the chapter I'm going to upload this on Canvas so you can learn about different um, start from the top so you can uh, see there are different types of walls and uh, you can see what they're used for. And then, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to just scroll down quickly. I want to get to curtain wall. So you see that curtain walls have actually mullions, they have panel, and they have uh, vertical and uh, horizontal uh, mullions. So they are different from uh, the stacked wall we just talked about and the basic wall in terms of the construction of them. So now let's start with creating and modifying walls. Uh, to do that, let's actually start a new project 
and that is what I did. So I'm just going to delete this wall and uh, follow uh, the other steps. So I'm going to go back to level one that is in floor plan. Zoom. I don't know why it was so hard to zoom. So I'm going to just delete this one and um, so okay here it's just as if I started a new project. I just want to and uh, the first thing you are going to do is actually to create levels. Uh, so if you go to any of the elevation, let's say we go to south elevation, you see that we have um, two levels already created. That is from the a template itself. But I want to add more um, levels. There are different ways to create levels. If you look at datum, under datum, you have a level. So I can add another level here. Before doing that, let's change the height of this one. So if you click on the number below the name level 2, you can change the height. So level 2, let's change it to 11. So that's 11 feet above level 1. Now I'm going to create another level. So if you click on it, you see that under option bar, I have the option to change the offset and create it. But first, let's just eyeball it and create it. So here, I'm going to type 11. And then if you extend this, and here you see the dashed blue line so that means they are aligned and then you can click so for the next one i can do the same thing again i'm going to move my mouse above this one you can either eyeball it or type 11 enter and then um switch it to the right so here i have four levels the fifth one i can uh, do different things so i can either change the offset so let's uh, change the offset to 11 and enter and let's see what happens. Now if I click, it's going to actually create an offset from where I clicked. So you want to click on the last one. Let's do it again. I want to, uh, you should click on the last level so it creates an offset from there. And it's aligned. So I purposely clicked somewhere in the middle. Now I can modify it. If you click on it, if you grab this blue dot and drag it, you can extend it and make sure they are aligned. Here there are these um, check marks. If you check it or uncheck it, the blue bubble will go away or I can show the bubble add another level as uh, the uh, slab footing so i want to create that one below this one um let's see i can also change this one to 45 and you can rename the levels if you want so i can rename the last one to Ooh. So pay attention it's asking if you would like to rename corresponding view yes so pay attention to the project browser you see my floor plans are also listed here and roof is also here and the name has changed and as i said here i want to create another one and this one i actually want to copy this one when you select it here under modify um, panel you have the option to copy the shortcut is seal so let's choose that and here i'm going to uh, i can first create it and then specify the um, distance or the height difference i want it to be minus one foot away from the one um, that is created at level one 
So here I can change this to minus one. I sort of randomly positioned it and then I changed the height. You can, if you click, I'm going to zoom in to see if it shows. You see there is an, um, a dash lines here, it says add elbow. So if I click on that, it's going to create an elbow. So that way uh, it actually uh, helps because it's it, it doesn't make it um, like uh, cluttered on top of each other. So they can I can move this elbow up and down so I can clean it up. Oops, I didn't mean to move the whole thing. And then uh, I'm going to change the name to um, lab. attention that how this one the bubble is not blue it's black it is because I copied this level so if you create another level by copying it's going to make it black and what it means is that it does not show it on their floor plans so there is no corresponding floor plan in the views for you but that is fine for now I don't want to have access I don't want to view that floor so that is okay okay next thing I want to do is to add grids and to do that I'm going to go to level one so grids are also under uh, datum and they help in architectural drawings or mechanical structural drawings it helps to know where things are, especially when we have large drawings. So to do that, again, under data, we can create grid. And if you click and <clears throat> move your mouse, it's going to create here a vertical grid. So I moved from up to bottom. And again, similar to levels here, I have the bubble on this side, I can turn it off and create it on top. So, and I can also change the naming here again. I have the elbow. Uh, I can do the same thing. I can either copy this and uh, create multiple ones, or I can just click on grid again. And I want this to be 20 feet from each other. So again, either I can eyeball it and click and draw. Or what I can do is that I can type number 20 and then drag it. So here is the third one and uh, fourth one. Remember that you can also copy and do this. I'm just here eyeballing it and creating them. Next one I can create by offset. So again, I can change the offset to 20 enter here I can click anywhere on the last one and uh, oops. Uh, the offset is to the right that's right to the left sorry so actually in this case um, since I started from there um, let's do 20 so here is the sixth one so we are good. Then I'm going to go <coughs> add the horizontal ones. So let's actually start from this side. So my bubbles are on the right side. And here, as you see, it continues with the numbering, but I want to change the number. So hit escape and then click on the number and let's change that to A. So the next one I uh, create feet. The next one is I create. It's going to follow the naming uh, that I changed it to, and then I'm going to create another one. A B C. Oops. So if you click where you don't want to click, you hit escape and it will actually discontinue it. 
Uh, if you hit twice, if you hit escape twice, it will um, stop the tool. You're so I created grids. And so now you know how to create levels, how to create grids. And uh, that is one of the main uh, steps in creating a new project before you start your uh, building modeling. So now that I have prepared my project, let's add the walls for my building. Uh, let's go back to level one. Go under, oh, actually I'm at level one. So uh, here I want to add the first wall. Uh, what I can do is that I can, again, either type WA or click on wall. By default, it will go to architectural wall. Uh, basic wall, let's change that to uh, generic 12. And then I'm going to start uh, sketching my wall. I can also modify in the option bar. I can modify, uh, make modifications. Let's not change anything for now. And then um, we will make those changes after we added the wall. Uh, or you can here, instead of unconnected, you can uh, make sure that your walls go all the way to uh, the roof. But let's not do that. And then I will show you another way to do it. So here's the intersection of the grids I have created. Um, now that I have grids, it's sort of easier to add the walls because I know the dimensions. Uh, click on that and then drag your mouse. Again, uh, you can use the grids for uh, dimensions or here I can type AD, enter, and it will create that um, length of wall. This is the end point when you have a square uh, that a purple or pinkish square means that's the end point. You can click on it and again drag your mouse, type number 80, enter. So by default that knows <coughs> the unit is in uh, feet. And then the next one, I'm going to click and um, 40. This time I use the grid do that I didn't type the number and here I had turned off the chain if I turn it on actually I will not have to click every time I <clears throat> turn 40 and here is the last piece of the wall so now oh actually let's change something escape escape twice I'm going to delete this part of the wall so now let's click on 3D. You see that the walls are created and they're going to level two as it was specified in that option bar, if you remember. If you hold your mouse over one wall and then you hit tab key, it's going to uh, highlight the chain of walls. And then if you click, it's going to select all of them so now under properties under top constraint that it, it was unconnected you can change this to roof and then uh, bring your mouse back to canvas and the walls are extended so either you can choose that in the beginning <clears throat> under option bar or it's actually a good practice to learn how to choose chain of walls or any elements connected to each other uh, this becomes very handy when you are working with a big project so here you hold your mouse hit tab key click and all of them are selected so practice it until you get hold of it first just hold your mouse over one piece of wall you do not click you just hold your mouse then tab key when all of them are highlighted, then you select them. You can make changes and modifications. Um, I might not be able to record more than 25 minutes for each uh, piece of lecture. So I'm going to pause here and start 
uh, new lecture. Actually, I'm going to let it run and see if it lets me uh, go over 25 minutes. If it does, then I will continue. If not, I will.